All right, uh, second speaker this afternoon session is Alexis Boutier from Institut Mathematique de Jussieu, Paris. So we speak on the five character sheets. Okay. Thanks uh, a lot for the introduction and also for the invitation. So, um, uh, so we saw different uh, general generalization of uh, each in uh, vibration. What I will talk about is somehow another direction you can choose. So you. St you stick with uh, each in vibration, but you look at uh, its local counterpart. And uh, what happened there is that uh, you get out uh, of the world of uh, finite dimensional geometry and you have everything which is widely infinite dimensional. And okay. so you have a, a new geometry to, to understand. So anyway, I will start by, by some uh, recall about uh, Springer, uh, Springer theory, both uh, classical and uh, global. So I will take uh, G, uh, connected uh, reductive group over K uh, algebraically closed. I think uh, BT Borel pair. And I will. Uh, for simplicity, as that the characteristic is prime to the order of the by group. So um, you will, first you have a uh, Grotendieck Springer resolution. So I will consider the, the version of uh, the Lie algebra version of it. I mean, it doesn't change my <clears throat> especially to make the link with the chain vibration, it's maybe more relevant. This and you have projection map to uh, G and uh, this uh, map pi is uh, proper small and over GRS the, the regular semi simple locus. Um, it is finite et al of a group W. So with all this property, you'll get a perverse shift just by defining the push forward of a constant shift, a constant shift uh, appropriately shifted. And this SG will be uh, perverse because of smallness. And smallness will also tell you that, uh, that it is the IC extension of its uh, restriction to uh, GRS. So uh, in particular, you will get that the, endom the shift, uh, the endomorphism of the shift will be just the group algebra of your value group. And um, this way, for any uh, gamma in G of K, uh, you'll get an action of uh, W on the cohomology of uh, B gamma, the Springer fiber. B gamma being. Okay, so uh, so this is way uh, a way to construct this W action, and in fact, this W action does not come from an action on the on the on the total space uh, or uh, on p it's really something that is cohomological and that you get uh, by ic extension i mean there, there are other constructions but let, let's uh, take this one and uh, the fact that uh, you have the regular representation as a shift of endomorphism also allows you to decompose your shift with respect to some isotypical uh, components and uh, these are orders also. 
Okay. And uh, so this uh, is one part of the story. And on the other hand, you have uh, an action of G. E tilde just by, if you have a pair G gamma, you act like H, G, and H, H of uh, gamma. And such that, when you take, when you consider the quotient stack, you will just get, uh, yeah, so this, uh, you get Lee of B divided by B. Yeah, so over there you should have a Lee of, uh, of B, not uh, B. Okay, and um, downstairs, and you have on a G, we have, the adjoint action and phi is a g equivalent. So uh, if you consider the quotient, the corresponding map at the level of quotient stack that way, in fact, you obtain that your chief uh, SG is in fact g equivalent and comes uh, SG descent. Uh, as a perversion on G mod G. And that way, you know that if you have a finite field by taking trace of Frobenius, you will get characters of uh, finite groups. This is uh, the beginning of uh, Lustig uh, character shift theory, which is uh, by taking we get uh, characters of GOFU. This is Lustig, Lustig theory. So this uh, string of vibration has two features, somehow this W action and, and uh, this adjoint action. And uh, in addition to this, um, as I said, you have the action of W on uh, this um, Springer fiber, but also G gamma now acts. So this is the centralizer of gamma. Acts on the Springer fiber and by uh, the homotopy lemma. The action on, uh, so it induces an action on the cohomology. Uh, the cohomology of uh, B gamma that factors through uh, the group of connected uh, components through phi zero of G gamma. So, you get this, this way a uh, picture where you have on one hand the action of W and on the other hand, the action of the group of centralizer and the commute. They commute, but a priori, they are independent uh, between each other. Uh, I mean, yes. Uh, So now we will move to uh, the global theory and we will see that uh, new uh, new features will uh, So the global, th uh, the global theory is a uh, unit theory of parabolic chain vibration, so, which is kind of familiar uh, normally from the audience. <laughs> this kind of so, let me recall the, the setup. So you take X projective smooth geometrically connected over K, and you take the an effective divisor. So then you will have the parabolic Hitchin vibration that will classify topos E uh, phi. 
with x, where x is the point uh, on your curve, b uh, e is the g torsor on x, and the map phi from uh, h zero of adjunct bundle twisted by O of D. And you ask and see uh, XB is a B reduction at X compatible with phi. Okay, so essentially it's just a usual uh, itching vibration and you had you had a, a point that can vary and this B reduction along this point compatible with the uh, XC. This is just the information about the flag on the spider. Yes, so es essentially uh, yes, so in in uh, in stacky terms, let's say this M parabolic will be obtained as the fiber product of the each in usual. So here you have the quotient site twisted by your uh, effective divisor. You have the same thing here. Okay, and this is just evaluation map at X. Okay, and this is a Cartesian diagram. This is another way to get it and now is, is this over x or over d little x or little x the divisor i mean I, you've got e sub x yes e sub x and you got a divisor d yes okay well how are the two linked or is it the, the x and d you mean yes they are different little x and yes d. yes okay yeah Sorry. Okay. Well, no, it's called a D, it just could be confusing. But, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, because it's a, it's a, uh, normally it's twisted, uh, because this uh, section is a twisted version, and this is what. Because really written this way, uh, each in it really maps from the curve to uh, this twisted guy. So. Okay. And so now you have the characteristic polynomial. Uh, T uh, from the Lie algebra to uh, T mod W. And this uh, will induce uh, like parabolic teaching vibration and par to uh, A, where you just take uh, characteristic polynomial of phi. Okay. And uh, so what we will uh, consider here. It's uh, we will consider a, a certain open subset. Well, so this is like the generic, generically regular semi-simple locus. So essentially, if you are familiar to the GNN case, it's just a case where the spectral cover is reduced. Okay, and so over this. Uh, this open, uh, then your uh, then you will consider the push forward of the constant shift and uh, Yun theorem uh, tells you that here you will have an action of the affine by group. So in this situation, by group is replaced by the affine by group. Sorry, this is not proper. No, okay. Because I just uh, I'm over just generically regular semi simple locus, so uh -huh. it's not just a finite type. Okay, mm -hmm. finite type. Okay, and so you don't see around. There is an action of YTW, which is the extended by group. 
Okay, so you take co-character twisted by W on, uh, on this push forward. Okay. So, um, good. And so now uh, what will replace uh, the, the role of the centralizer? So the role of the centralizer will be replaced by a picker stack that acts, I mean, so we have P that acts over A, so this is a picker stack. Okay, and again, uh, by homotopy, you get an action of the shift of relative component of pi zero on, on the cohomology, uh, on the cohomology. <clears throat> Are you assuming anything on the positivity of P or the theorem? Is this for any P or is it? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, no, or maybe, ah, yes, uh, I guess uh, maybe a D of a degree uh, bigger than 2G minus. But uh, is it really necessary? Okay, uh, just uh, 2G minus one, but uh, probably I guess in the critical case, it's uh, also sufficient, but, but um, uh, yes, okay. No, no, but maybe as a degree has to be uh, greater because uh, in order to, to prove this theorem, he has, I think he needs some um, think about uh, delta stratification. So maybe in the critical case, uh, the canonical bundle, it's not, uh, yeah, it's not sure, but okay, but let's uh, take a um, degree of D bigger than uh, two, uh, 2G minus one. So but, the fine about the by group action, can you uh, see it similarly as in the classical setup? So, so, uh, let, no. Okay, so the point is the way you construct it is uh, in terms of uh, correspondence. And so you have, because uh, what you had before uh, for uh, Springer theory, you had over this nice locus, you have a natal cover of group uh, of group uh, W. But here, of course, uh, you generically your uh, your vibration is just uh, an abelian uh, vibration. But in fact, it is the so this P is built using uh, the regular centralizer. And this regular centralizer has a uh, Galois description that involves the torus and, uh, okay, I think Cho uh, mentioned it. And it's, um, and so it's, uh, first you do it on, on this generically uh, uh, locus, uh, ge generic locus where essentially there is no difference between M and P. And then uh, to extend to the whole vibration, you say, you say that uh, the correspondence they extend by some uh, uh, by some argument of uh, co-dimension, because in fact the locus where it's smooth it's of co-dimension two, and then uh, yes the map at the level of correspondence only see what happens over uh, this uh, locus. So so this is uh, how we construct it, and now the the main difference is that. This action of this P zero, of, of this pi zero uh, will control part of the action of this W tilde. So in the following way, so uh, there is a map of sheaves of algebra over A R sigma from uh, the spherical part of uh, the group algebra of uh, W to group algebra of pi zero of P. Right, A so you have this map. And, uh, okay.
the subject, the morphism uh, for, uh, from the spherical part W2 and the morphism shift of uh, factors through sigma. <clears throat> So this morphism comes from just the, uh, you restrict the, action, the WT action to this subalgebra. Okay, and so the claim is that it factors through, uh, through sigma. So, uh, so you, somehow you have a big part of uh, this group algebra which, which is just controlled by uh, this uh, centralizer. So this is really like somehow the new feature that you have uh, in, global, uh, in the global situation. Okay. So now we can move to, to the local one because what are the, there are two drawbacks somehow in a Yun, a Yun uh, perspective. Is first, of course, uh, we have an action of uh, YTW, but uh, the endomorphism shift a priori is not, uh, but. The endomorphism shift is not um, is not the group algebra. Of uh, uh, okay and uh, yeah so and so somehow. You don't see how you how to get uh, like uh, so you have this W action part, but you don't have the part uh, that comes from G. So in the Springer theory, you had W and you have the G action, and this gives you uh, both uh, both ways. And so now in this global picture, you have this drawback. And okay, so yes, you had the stars again the shriek. And ah yeah, yeah 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 okay sorry and and you really mean the vector curve reduced or so yes it's yes but reduced. it can be reducible so this is that can have infinite dimensional of infinite rank fibers of this yes uh, yeah yes yeah. yes yeah, uh, yeah. yeah but somehow uh, the fact that the fiber are uh, infinite dimensional uh, it's not really uh, important in order to construct the action because it's really a uh, more a fact about the uh, correspondence uh, that uh, extends from uh, the nice locus to the whole locus. So now we will move to the local theory where somehow everything will be infinite dimensional, but you'll see that it will share both uh, properties from the classical situation and the global situation. Okay, so let me... Uh, I will denote by F the field of Laurent series, A double bracket two power series. And if I take X affine or finite type of a K, then I can build two functors, the functors of arcs. And the functor of loops. Okay, so the first one is representable by an affine scheme, but not the theory. Okay, and the second one by uh, an in affine in scheme. Because now you are in the local picture, means that what you will want to produce is a function on G of F. But now G of F as a, an object, uh, if you want to see it as a, a geometric object, it has to be, a, you have to take the loop space of G, which will be infinite dimensional over the reading field. Okay. And so I will have an evaluation map at zero from the arcs to, uh, to G, and I will denote by I 
the Iwari uh, subgroup. Okay, so with, now I have this I, I can form the quotient Lg mod I, which is the affine flight variety. Which is in proper in scale and in fact even in projective. Okay, so now what will be uh, the Grotendich Springer vibration? That I, I don't know if you mentioned it, but that's a new horizon. Group. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's new horizon. Group. So we have the following C tilde, which will consist of pairs G gamma in flight time loop group of G, such as at G minus one of gamma with inside. I and you send it to LG by the second projection. Okay, and in fact, this map factors through the in scheme of compact elements that we call it C, which consists of elements in the loop. The algebra such that when you take the characteristic polynomial, it has integral coefficient. Okay, so this comes from the fact that at g minus one gamma is inside the, the fewer so. Okay, and this and that way you will end up with this map city that you see, which will be in proper. In proper, and I will need to consider a certain uh, sub uh, in scheme, the open of again generically regular semi-simple elements. Because somehow the the fiber will have some nice property. So typically, if I take a point uh, there, gener generically regular semi simple, so then I have the Springer, affine Springer fiber. Okay, which is uh, again, so this is an uh, improper in scheme. And you have the following uh, theorem due to Kazdan Lustig and Bezo Kavnikov. That when you take the reduce uh, part, it's a case scheme locally of finite type. And you have a dimension formula for it will be given by d gamma and a c gamma over two, where d gamma is the valuation of uh, the discriminant, and c gamma is some Galois defect obtained by just the rank of the torus minus the F rank of the centralizer. So your element is generically regular semi-simple. So this centralizer, it's a maximal torus. And then you take the split part of it. OK, so let me just give two basic examples of uh, in the SL2 case of such an such object. If you take uh, D to be a cell two, and you take gamma to be uh, like this element,
Um, okay. Then what you will get okay, so will be the infinite set of P1. So, so let me just mention so to be exact, it's if uh, you consider the version in the affine Grassmannian instead of like uh, replace. Uh, but this doesn't change, it's just something like a W2 uh, replace flag by affine Grossman. But anyway, so it it uh, it does not change much. And the second example is if you take, so this is the element of uh, dimension two, of, uh, of valuation uh, two. So in particular uh, with the formula, so uh, dimension C of gamma here will be zero because your element is split. So you get a fiber of dimension one. And here, the dimension formula tells you that uh, it's discrete. And what you will get as an in scheme, it will be the affine Grassmannian of T twisted by W, which means that when you take the red part, the reduced part, you end up by just getting the affine value group. So here you, you see really why is uh, all, all, although it's infinite dimensional, the local situation has better feature because here over uh, some open as fibers, you really get uh, the, affine, the affine value group. Okay. And let me also mention one extra geometric property. It's that it also explains how infinite uh, dimension, dimensional it is. It it's there is a lattice uh, lambda gamma that acts on the Springer fiber such that the quotient is a proper algebraic space. So essentially, uh, it's something finite dimensional times, times this lattice. Okay. So now, uh, just in the case of Petel 2, I have described uh, one fiber. So what we need is uh, the description of the whole vibration first over the, the most uh, generic locus. So this is uh, the first theorem. So this is joint with Kajdan uh, and Varshevsky. And that, uh, if you look at what happened over the regular semi-simple part, so here regular semi-simple means that your characteristic polynomial has a regular semi-simple reduction mod t. So typically this kind of element. Then this will be uniformized by so the total space will be like this. So uh, uh, yes, okay. This forgot to mention. Okay. And here, the CRS part, you will just get L plus TRS divided by W times LT. Okay, so I just forgot to mention, but here on this vibration, you have again an action of LG, the loop group. And before, if you remember, when you have a Grotendich Springer uh, vibration, when you have G tilde divided by G, you just get the Borel divided by Borel, by adjunct action. So here, the same way, when you divide C tilde by LG, you just get uh, the Lie algebra of Iori divided by I. And here, you just get nothing. You, it just has a stack, but the point is, at least uh, over some open here, you can you have a control of what do you get? But you didn't caution by on G over there, right? Well, why do we caution by on G here? In order to uh, to know. to to make the the thing more manageable, because here the point is uh, so this is real. This will be really important. Is that 
Before, uh, when you are in a finite dimensional situation, you don't care if you divide by G or not. Uh, you you can uh, G is smooth, so uh, from the point of view of power shift, it doesn't matter. But here in the infin infinite dimensional situation, uh, it matters a lot because LG uh, LG is an in scheme and it's not smooth. So really, the the thing to consider is um, to divide by LG because at least you get something more manageable. So why this? Because here you can see already. Here you had something ind divided by ind, and here you have just pro divided by pro, and these pro they are smooth. It's projective of smooth, so it's something you can uh, handle. Okay, so and so here you see, so and so here the, on the top it's the same, and what do you have? You have L, you divide by l plus t, and here you have w times l t. Which means that this morphism it is fiber in it's exactly Grotti times W, which means that up uh, to uh, nil potent you get exactly an etal cover of group uh, W tilde. Okay, so this tells you that, I mean, it's a good start, but now uh, what you want to do is, uh, after that, you want to take the push forward, of course. And uh, in order this push forward to have the same property as a usual theory, you want it to be small. But everything is finite dimensional, in infinite dimensional. So what does it mean to be small? Okay, so here, so, there is a way to say that the morphism is small, and how do you do it? The point is, so the morphism from uh, okay. so I will al always considering the LG equivalent situation over the generically regular semi-simple locus. And so this map is small, and what does it mean? Uh, it means here that the codimension of line uh, delta inside D e of i is greater than delta for all delta greater than one. And Li of E delta, what is it? It is the locus of uh, gamma inside Li e of i such that dimension of the fiber is equal to delta. So usually when you have a small map, uh, you formulate it in terms of uh, codimension on the target. So codimension of the, of the target, you say that codimension of uh, the locus where it has uh, uh, fibers of dimension delta is greater than two delta. But here, what makes it really difficult is that downstairs there is no way to compute co-dimension in a reasonable way. But here you have something pro on the source. So on the source, it's easier to compute co-dimension because uh, it will uh, essentially end up uh, by uh, reducing to finite dimensional situation because uh, you have uh, something finitely presented and so it comes from downstairs and uh, so you are able to compute co-dimension. So this is in the, um, how you make sense of smallness there. Okay. So you have smallness, and now, uh, of course, what you will need to know is uh, a T structure. So you want a notion of perversity. So, how does it work? So, the way you get it is because your space will have. Uh, although, so this as a whole space, it's really difficult uh, to understand it, but it will be stratified by some strata CWR over LG. So this is like the Goresky Kotwitz McPherson root valuation stratification. 
So essentially, W will be an element of the byte group, and R will be a function like uh, 2Q plus. So it's a, a function a valuation of the root. So essentially, this CWR, it's when you fix the valuation of, uh, of the roots and uh, the type of uh, the centralizer. So if the, for SN2, if W is equal to one, then you have a split element. And if W is non-trivial, uh, it will be a non-split torus. Okay, so you have this stratification and the point is on each of these strata, you can again, uniformize this uh, gadget the same way as you did over the regular semi-simple locus. Okay. Why am I catched down? And here, the statement will be that will be isomorphic to CWR divided by CW. Uh, okay. Okay, and TW, so uh, where TWR is a cross smooth scheme and uh, W will be index W is uh, a subgroup of W that stabilize uh, the strata, the strata, and uh, the loop of the torus, it just, uh, and T W is a twisted form of your torus. Okay, then you might ask, uh, what do I do with this? So somehow this uh, is more manageable because I said you have something smooth on the top and then you divide by, okay, the final group, it doesn't matter. And then you divide by LTW. So this is an in scheme, but it's uh, loops of uh, torus which means that loops in the torus, you, you know what it is, is essentially a lattice times something pro smooth. Okay, so LTW, when you take like the radius part, it will be just the co-character of TW times L plus TW. And this is again pro smooth. So, uh, there is a way to put this structure on such a stratum. And then after that, you glue. So uh, you, you see there is something really important in, uh, in this whole, uh, it is in this whole uh, theory is that, I mean, when you have uh, stacks like C model G, I mean, they are really uh, not representable, completely uh, infinite dimensional. You see, you might think that there is no hope to, to do anything with it. But the point is, even you don't understand it as a whole, if it has a nice stratification when you, where you understand what it happens and you have a way to glue, then you have a T structure. And so the fact is these strata, they are uh, finitely presented locally closed inside this. And so uh, by just a general uh, uh, theory, you can glue. And this is the way you get uh, a T structure. Okay. Oh, this is my gluing. On the sheets of the... Okay. So the point is the derived category of sheets on such a thing, it's uh, defined for almost anything uh, using uh, infinity categorical machinery. So the derived category is fine, but as usual, uh, what is uh, what causes you trouble? It's uh, like a heart, and this is uh, the way you get it. Okay, so now I can formulate the main like main theorem of our paper with Mister uh, Dunning.
Okay, so first, uh, so we define infinity categories of elliptic sheaves. Um, okay, D on D of I and uh, the same way on the compact element. And as your map is improper, you have a push forward. So your uh, F upper shift is defined and also, and a dualizing shift. Omega. Yeah. Okay, fine. Now you can, so you can take the push forward. Okay. Now uh, on this category, it has a T structure. So you can say now, and this, so this is further shift. And it is obtained as IC extension. Of its restriction to the regular semi simple locus. And now, main difference with the global situation is that over this regular semi simple locus, you have a netal cover. Just quickly say the difference between what, what was C's. Bullet like the, the larger locus. Was the it means uh, it means ger generically regular semi simple. Yeah, because I always always I'm always on this locus because it's there that the fibers are finite uh, dimensional. Otherwise, they are just in skin. And so here I have no idea what to do with this. Okay. <laughs> so now you will have that the ship of endosomorphism is really the group algebra of W tilde, okay? So, you get, we get an action of W tilde on the complex, on the of homology of the fiber. So this way you can construct in family this action of W tilde. So in fact, this action of W tilde, uh, point by point, it was before uh, constructed by uh, Lustig. But here uh, we have um, a version in family and the fact that you end up with the turner shift somehow it, uh, it will uh, have more structure. Okay. So now what is the next step is co-invariance and symmetries. Okay, so before uh, you have uh, this action of W and you were able to, uh, to take isotypical components. But here you have an uh, uh, affine value group, which is in finite dimensional. So taking coinvariants are not uh, exact. Coinvariants are not T exact. And the second point is uh, the fiber, uh, when you take that the, uh, the homology in each uh, degree, it's in finite dimensional. So what do you want is uh, somehow to take now a uh, co-invariant, but you will have to do it in a derived way and at the end obtain a constructible further shift. So the first, uh, the first thing you have, so 
in order to take, to take this derived co-invariant and so that they can behave well, you need to some finiteness result. So some finiteness result, the following. Is that S uh, half is a shift. Uh, it's a constructible shift of W tilde module. So in particular, this uh, finiteness will tell you that in particular for any uh, finite dimensional representation of W tilde, when you take the co-invariant, you will get a constructible shift. So this, uh, this is good. And now uh, what you want to know is, is it perverse? And uh, again, a priori, there is no reason to be perverse because here, uh, taking the ref co-invariant, yeah. A priori, it only preserve uh, uh, in one, uh, on one, uh, only on one side, the, yeah, it's only T, T exact on one side. Okay, so in order to to uh, understand what do you get with this uh, co-invariant, you have to understand well how this uh, W tilde acts. And now uh, the way it should act is through uh, this group of uh, connected components. So, uh, I mean, globally it was that way, and now we'll see that somehow it will also be uh, similar in the local situation. So you will have a local, uh, uh, local Picard. Yeah. Okay, so this is a group uh, commutative grouping scheme, which is in finitely presented. And your this local pika it will act on your uh, vibration, and uh, also the action of P will commute with uh, with L, with action of LG and uh, of also of uh, W T data. Okay, and now if you take a point here, what is this? Uh, uh, what is the fiber? You get PA, so PA red, it will be just LGA over L plus GA red, and is smooth, uh, locally of finite type. And what is GA? GA is regular centralizer. At A. So in particular, here uh, over the over the um, over f, this GA will be uh, some uh, torus, maximal torus, and then uh, it will this maximal torus will have an integral model that will uh, degenerate. Uh, yeah, some uh, yeah, some delicate uh, way. Okay, so this is a, so you have something smooth, good. And that way you will have that PA will act on the complex of homology. But here you, you, you will have uh, something new that will appear. In order to take derived co-invariant, you need to understand the action on PA on the complex. So before in new situation, he took like the sub semi-simplified version. So he took like the cohomology shift and there you can uh, use the homotopy lemma to say that it's factor through pi zero. So here you really need a, a version of this on the whole complex. And so, you, so first you have like this homotopy lemma uh, for PA is that the action factors 
So this is a, an extra ingredient through pi zero of PA. Okay, and the same way, uh, uh, and wait, gamma, A and gamma are related just by the characteristic polynomial. So the action on the complex factor uh, through the group of codetic components. And uh, in fact, locally, you have, uh, so Yun, he proved a weak version of his CRM. So, for spring for a fine spring of fiber. So you have the same way um, a local map from spherical part to group algebra. And so okay. So uh yeah, so so now I will state it as a con conjecture is that the action of uh, this. Factors through sigma gamma. So this uh, set it as a conjecture, and I will explain after maybe some uh, some um, way to tackle it. And anyway, so if we have uh, this uh, somehow uh, stronger version of yun uh, yun argument. Then we have the following thing. So let us assume G simply connected and tau the finite dimensional uh, representation of W, which is torsion. By this, I mean that when you restrict to the co character part, it's a direct sum of torsion, co -char torsion characters. Okay, and uh, assuming the conjecture, uh, generalized you, let's say, then S2 is perverse. Okay, uh, so it's perverse, and uh, as we already did. so, and it's constructible. Okay, and so now we'll finish by some final remarks about this. So first, it's perverse, but then, uh, of course, you you ask for the support. And uh, the the point is, uh, it will be not. I mean, it has supports. It's not uh, in general supported everywhere. And uh, let me explain why, how to get a, a feeling why it should uh, it should be perverse. So, two remarks. So. S2 has a support. I mean, in fact, we can even give a, a bound. Yeah. yeah. can give a bound uh, on the support. Okay. And uh, now you perform like this uh, coinvariance. You have something uh, constructible, so then you can take the trace and you get a well-defined function on the set. Okay, on the set trace of Frobenius acting on S two gives a function L gamma to Q L bar, uh, which is uh, yeah. what? In ah, yeah, yeah, in the algebra, yeah. Okay. In the Lie algebra, which is the uh, uh, conjugacy invariant. Yeah. Okay, and so, uh, uh, yes. And, uh, okay, and just let me mention why this S2 uh, should be perverse. It's um, S2 is perverse because of a certain co dimension formula. Because if you count the codimension of the W uh, of the strata CWR, so it will consist of uh, two parts, delta WR, 
le CWA plus a certain invariant. Okay. So this is essentially a dimension of Springer fiber on the, over this plata. This is a Galois defect. And this is a certain uh, number. Uh, this is a uh, extra uh, extra invariant. I mean, let me not uh, go too much into this definition. But so the point is, what you will have is that. So the point is, uh, before taking uh, co-invariant, this. Uh, so here it's like the delta, and this uh, part will be uh, was always greater than one. So this uh, is responsible for smallness. But now you take derived co-invariant. And so the point is, is uh, that using Yun theorem, or generalizing Yun, using generalized Yun, the action factors through phi zero of connected components. And the kernel will be exactly a lattice that acts trivially, which will be exactly the rank. And the kernel uh, is a lattice of rank CWR. Which means that when you take the co-invariant, it will shift in the wrong direction by uh, CWR uh, in uh, this uh, part. But as you have uh, this co-dimension formula, it is compensated by the fact that the co-dimension is bigger. And so, so you have some constellation coming from here and from here. And the fact that you have this constellation tells you that you end up with just a delta here and this DWR. And the reason why it's not concentrated everywhere is because of this DWR, which can be zero sometimes. And it's exactly how you get the bound on the support. Okay, so just stop here. Do you know, can you say anything about this function? Yes, uh, so, uh, so here I took, uh, the point of view of uh, Lie algebra, but in fact, most of, uh, of it, I mean, uh, you can uh, do it at the level of uh, groups. And when you are at the level of groups, uh, Bezokarnikov and uh, Varshavsky, they compute what kind of function you get. And essentially, uh, the, by this construction, what you will get is that character of, uh, of uh, deep, depth zero representation coming from uh, the linear stig induction. Mm. So, so, so this is uh, the first class of example uh, that you could get uh, by take, by uh, by this construction. Yes. Well, what do you mean we bound on the support? Uh, because I mean, when you have a because it won't be small, <laughs> but it will be semi-small, and uh, when you have a semi-small map, when uh, I mean, the support when do they appear precisely when uh, the dimension of the fiber is exactly delta. And, uh, okay. and so uh, the locus uh, where uh, this DWR will be uh, zero uh, will tell you that at most uh, the support, I mean, they are located there. Then you don't know uh, precisely what, what can happen. Is there a relationship between the support and this function uh, and the representation? Uh, this, um, I mean, even the irreducible, there shouldn't be so many support, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, no, no, uh, yes, but yeah, yeah, but, uh, but, yeah, no, probably, but, uh, yeah, hmm, uh, yes. Yeah, I guess, uh, probably, uh, I mean, you, you have, uh, bound on the support and probably if you I mean in the situation where you can compute the function and you, you see if it's a zero or not generically and so uh, you will uh, you will know can what to get but uh, yeah. you know the whether these shifts are locally constant along the GK and yeah, I wish 
No, no, I don't. I, I, no, no, I don't. I don't know. Uh, so this is like a separate uh, story. It's that somehow this this object uh, you have a way to define a singular support of theory, and uh, you know that uh, the singular support of uh, I mean. So before taking coinvariant, huh? so you have this SGF, and you, there is a way to define the singular support, and you know that it will be contained inside the the, the conormals. But uh, the problem is that uh, this stratification is really difficult to understand. You don't even know if we, if uh, the closure of a strata is a strata, and you would need uh, to know much more like uh, this to be Whitney in order to be able to prove some locally constant, local constant. Okay. No more question. Let's thank um, Alex. Again.